was it. It was parked, and here she sits. Lights, push buttons, brake, notice there's no more clonk, yeah. dip sounds, is fixed. Sounds just good. Yeah, no, it's been really behaving. Well, this is like the third time I've driven it, so. What do we figure? Four, four years, almost four, to the day. Geez, 2018. From when we, not from when I bought it, but from when we cut it up. Sure. What a car, man. You put everything to shame. <laughs> yeah, most of these cars, they're not stopping traffic. <laughs> they are traffic. Yeah. <laughs> All right. There we go. Cool speedometer. Yeah. 
those great big arrows. <laughs> well, we got a little work to do on that front U joint, but pretty small change. Lots of time. It almost seems, uh, you know, I've walked by this car so many times without any thought about when you were going to drive it. So now that you are driving it, it's almost like it just appeared out of nowhere because of the amount of, you know, it was almost like an academic idea that you would ever finish it. It's, then again, not finished, but at least we're like we're out driving it around. I'd like to get the radio. I got some surprises there. Like you don't really hear the exhaust. It's so nice. It's really, really cool. Sounds just right outside, but no sound inside, really. Sure. And uh, what else did we discover here? Not too much. I mean, it drives just like, well, I don't know. It's hard to describe the way it drives. I guess I haven't got enough hours in it yet, but look at that. This is what it's about. These changing. Beautiful, day. beautiful, beautiful day. And, uh, so, coming up, we're going to get a chance to take it back to Kevin, who I bought the car from. And uh, he and his mom are quite excited to see it, so that's really cool. Uh, I wasn't sure. It turns out he was kind of following along the whole time, so uh, that's really cool. I doubt that his mom was following along, but uh, uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin, actually, I didn't think he'd ever think of the car again, but he actually watched all the videos. So when I contacted him yesterday, he uh, he was uh, he knew I didn't think he'd even remember me. And he's like, "Oh yeah, I've been watching all the videos." So that's really cool. Drives really well. It's I actually like the uh, unassisted drum brakes better than the than the power ones. My 67 has power brakes and they're just, they're so over boosted that it's actually, they're, they're worse to drive than, than manual brakes. I mean, I don't know what kind of a lightweight you'd have to be to not be able to push the pedal on this. So I thought when I finished the car that it would be fun to go back and read all the, uh, the, you ruined that car comments on the first video when we cut it up and, uh, I see in the intervening years, people have more or less erased all of those, so that was good. I think that you don't know what you're doing comments stopped after about the fourth video, so I think they stopped when the doors clicked close. So anyhow, I'm just going to enjoy it. And uh, you know, part of the thing with this project was that we hadn't really tried to do anything actually very tricky on the channel, and I thought Maybe a lot of people really think that all we do is sit around and get stoned and drink beer and don't ever actually achieve anything. And it's, you know, I'm kind of hoping that stuff, stuff like this will, uh, you know, alleviate those kind of feelings. So, sure. and uh, I actually had several people write to me and thank you, you know, uh, and say, uh, you know, I thought I was one of the people that said you'd never finish this and I want to apologize and to those people that's very cool thank you that's something that's pretty rare these days is people who will you know go out of their way to to uh, you know to change their mind so that's very cool uh, there is one exception of course uh, who thinks it's cool to slag me in the comment sections on other people's video let's see you do better let's see you do anything because last I checked you're a hack other than that everybody's been just extremely supportive of this whole thing and something about this project and I, I think it was the, the the nature of just how how rough of a car we were trying to save here so uh, I think something about that really appealed uh, <laughs> don't don't think it means that every car I'm gonna do is gonna be this bad because I I need a break from this kind of one the next car is gonna be super easy uh, Leave us a like if you want to see me get the 59 on the road in one week. Um, that was kind of my dessert. So I, my carrot for finishing this car was I get to do the 59 and it needs almost nothing. So uh, another 318 poly two-door car, just a nice old girl. And uh, the, the idea of this project was that this car 
could sit behind that car in the garage and they would both look nice and, and you wouldn't be like, oh, too bad this one's such a piece of shit. But in fact, this one here is actually, uh, I have to say, nicer than the yellow one now. <laughs> I may have over succeeded there. Look at the steering, eh? Woo! It's just pinky, <laughs> pinky steering. Look, I'm Bill Bixby, eh? Hey? <laughs> Uh, anybody knows who, uh, who we're talking about? Uh, Dave told me, that, uh, if you look at the 60 Fury brochure, that's Bill Bixby. Oh, look at this nice old Comet here. Oh, nice. 65. Yeah, that's cool. Like Good gumption. Well, I'm taking her easy until it's fully dialed, but... Yeah, it's got lots of power, for sure. And, uh, right, you know what's nice? No squeaks, no rattles, no wind noise. And, uh, you know, we're not sawing away at the wheel. Everything is just right. Vibration. Nope, tires are all balanced and new. And You know what was really cool is how much of the front suspension is still all original parts. And uh, so that dart that we used to make this car couldn't have had too many miles on it. Mm -hmm. Is that the suspension? Is the dart suspension? Yeah, this is all the dart subframe and everything. Yeah. It's got a great handling, actually. Sonoramic power. <laughs> yeah, sonoramic two barrel power. Yeah. Again, didn't build it so I can get somewhere, built it to save it, you know. Some people are like, you have to drive it a lot. I'm like, I'm not going to drive it a lot. I never want to put a wrench on this car again, so it's not going to get driven much. But when I do want to use it, I'm going to be able to jump in, turn the key, and go. I'm not going to have to, you know, fuck around with it to get it running. Like, it's, it's just going to be ready to go anytime I want. Just like the, oh, this is better put together than the 67 right now, really. Like this has all, this is actually my nicest car, I would say. This is nice. It actually, it really I could not have hoped for it to drive better than this. Like, just no road noise, really. Almost no noise at all. I mean, of course, coming from the Model T, everything is pretty quiet, but sure. Like, uh, we uh, still have a little work to do, obviously, a little letter stripping and stuff, but mostly it's, pretty good. It's solid, but comfortable. Usually when you say solid, you think, uh, maybe not so comfortable, but yeah, yeah. solid, but no, this is solid, but with comfort. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, it's surprising, you know. Very maneuverable. Very. <laughs> Everything being relative, I guess. Yeah. But, uh... She's a, just an absolute blast to drive. The KO really Buckley. is. Yeah. Buckley. Yeah. Did he have one? I thought he had Imperial. Uh, he did have Imperial. Well, yeah. In the test, in the road test. Oh, but he road so tested these sure. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. They probably gave him the one with the big engine. Now, we get to get her up the very first time to 60 miles an hour here. 60 in the 60. Yeah. It's <laughs> interestingly, uh, Smitty's. Who inspected it? John said that the speedometer is bang on, which is quite weird for a car of this era. Usually yeah. they're very optimistic. Look at that. There we are, 100 kilometers an hour. Look at that, eh? Just beautiful. Just nothing. Wow. This is the first what a time. Treat. First time. It's oh, you can put some speeds. miles away in this. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Slows down. Hold on. Oh, yeah, there's 
no problems. No problems. I'm going to adjust the brakes once more after we've driven it a bit. I like them to be just absolutely dialed right in. And we kind of put them together as quick as we could after we rebuilt the rear end because I needed to get it done. So, uh, And you always want to, after they break in a bit, you want to go back and adjust everything. So, so that's good. No more surging like it was doing the first couple of times. It's actually really nice. And just no exhaust, eh? Like nothing. Yeah, nice. yeah. Like, I don't hear anything from the yeah. exhaust. And then when it's outside, you can hear it. That's it. Right? Like, everything is just silent. That was my real goal. To That's me, it. the definition of success here was that it didn't feel like a put together car when you're done. It had to feel like it had always been this way. Something stored for many years. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to be able to put it behind the yellow car and nobody would ever think twice unless you knew the story on the car. You would never think twice about seeing it. Except to think, man, that's a weird fucking car. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it purrs along really nice. We'll have to make a shitty version of it for going on road trips. <laughs> yeah. But this was, you know, this was designed, I mean, there's a reason we didn't paint the bottom of the car, right? Sure. So I can, if it rains tonight when we're filming, I'm not stopping, we're just oh, yeah. driving it. Yeah. But I'm not, you know, I'm not going to go pound it up the Alaska Highway to get to a campground. Like, I got lots of cars, I'll do that too. So, but difference between what you will do with it and what it could do. You could do it. You could literally get in this car and drive it every day for years and years. It's better rust proof than they ever were. And uh, it's driving exceptionally well. I like the big flashy blinkers. They're cool, eh? You know, all the lights are coming on. It's awesome. It's like your own spaceship. Yeah, and nice knowing that every light is working, everything, you know, you're not like, oh god, the reverse light's not like nothing, it all works, 100% of it works, so that's cool, wipers, everything, so let's pull her up here and shut her down and we'll have a Beauty. So shut her down. Okay, fun, eh? Yes. What have you been getting up to? You smell kind of funny. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the video this week. I know it's uh, shorter than the usual ones, but I really just wanted it to be about this one thing. This one time, I know we usually do a bunch of stuff, but I really just wanted this video to be just about uh, you know, getting plates on the Fury and taking it for a drive. And so that's what we did. Uh, the videos are all a lot of work. This one was really a lot of work and I had a lot of help from the guys getting the filming done and uh, you know, and Kyle and Andy and Dave and, and Jay and I mean the boys really, uh, really helped me out here. And uh, so anyway, uh, that's why the video is a little shorter this week and uh, I also thought, you know, it might be uh, sometimes maybe I don't get as many views on the videos because they are so long. So I kind of an experiment there. See if we can uh, see if the video is a little more, uh, you know, watchable because it's not an hour long. A lot of people don't have time. So anyway, that was the thinking there. I'm going to either do an extra video this week or make one that's extra long next time. Something like that. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I certainly uh, had a lot of fun making it. You probably noticed that Frankers wasn't in the car in this video, but I haven't got an appropriate amount of seat covers on it yet, and she doesn't really care how much time I put into the upholstery, so... Right? Yeah? Just gonna take off then? Okay. And I want to say uh, a special thank you to the patrons of this show, who, without whom this car could not have gotten uh, put together. You know, it's not that the car really cost me very much money. If anybody's interested, I might even do a... a you know, uh, adding up of the 
budget on the car, but I, I'm very confident it's less than 10 grand to put this car together, and that's in Canadian pesos. The support from the patrons allowed me to take the time to do this car and not be fixing dented minivans, which is what I've been doing to keep the lights on here for 20 years. And so this represents, you know, what I wanted to do with the, you know, with the, with what I've learned uh, fixing cars over the years. And it, uh, it really means a lot to me that I get to exercise all this equipment and, and uh, lessons learned on, uh, on cars like this instead of just cranking out, you know, scratched up fenders and stuff. Uh, I really, this was what I wanted to do from when the time I was a kid and it was just never going to happen without the, without you guys. So, you know, thank you so much. Uh, it really means a lot to me and the car means a lot to me. Um, not just as a car, but as a, something that I set out to do that I said I was going to do and that I did it. And, uh, we still have lots of little stuff to do and, and, uh, of course some surprises coming up for the car, but by and large, you know, it is a plated, legitimate, safe, drivable, totally usable car. You know, in that sense, mission accomplished. In recognition of this somewhat auspicious day, uh, we have decided, and uh, due to some popular demand, or at least by the standards of this place, popular demand, we have decided to print a t-shirt of the 1960 Fury. I will put a picture of it probably over there on that side of the screen somewhere, and it's a uh, uh, another shirt that we've designed ourselves and I'm very happy with it and uh, taken from a photograph of the car. So uh, if you guys like the t-shirt it will be in the store today. As with all the other shirts we've done we don't have uh, the overhead that we can support a large inventory so what we are doing is we're taking orders for the next two weeks only and uh, and then whatever orders we've gotten in the two weeks, we will get those printed and shipped out immediately. Please, if you uh, if you want one, uh, they're only available for a couple weeks, and uh, then we're going to get them all shipped out. They'll all be in black, and they we've had uh, we've had really good luck with the uh, printer, and they are very good quality. Anybody who's ordered any of our other shirts has uh, has uh, been happy with them, and we've had no complaints. So. Thanks so much. If you want to get a Plymouth Fury shirt, here's your chance. And it's very cool that enough people asked that we decided to go ahead and do it. So thank you guys and thank you to anybody who suggested that we should do it. And so here they are, uh, Plymouth Fury t-shirts. It will be uh, available for a couple of weeks here. Now, what else are we going to talk about on this thing? We had a, a couple of legitimate questions here with regards to the serial number on the car, whether it is in fact a Dodge or a Plymouth, and I can assure you it is a Plymouth. And uh, let's have a quick look. Okay, and there is a close-up of the serial number. Those are the original welds, because they are not, in fact, screwed on or riveted on, as I've seen on uh, lots of cars that are for sale, uh, especially convertibles. They tend to have the serial number it tends to be held on with rivets or screws. This tag is actually welded to the body, and those are the welds, and they are still in the original place, and those are the original welds. If you were to peel this off, which I would never do, it has the original metallic blue factory paint underneath it. So I will leave it at that, but that is the serial number of the car that I bought from Kevin four years ago. And it is still there. So yes, it is a Plymouth. It is a Plymouth serial number welded to the A post. This is the only welded serial tag, the one on the firewall. Uh, is what can be put on with screws. That's the body tag. We'll have a quick look. And there you can see the original Fury uh, body tag is still there. P2, whatever it says there. Anyway, that's the one from the uh, car that I bought. So, there we have it. If anybody wants to know anything specifically about the car, you know, if it's reasonable or possible to answer it, I'd be happy to. We'll have a quick look at the engine here. Of course, this is the engine from the Dodge Dart that we cut up. This engine has never been out of this car. Or rather, the engine is still in the subframe of the Dodge Dart, which is, of course is the bottom six inches of this car. I think it's the original engine from the Dart, but I can't be totally sure. Um, but anyway, there it is. That's how they were done. 
we could keep going on the engine, right? It would be nice to uh, to have the little stickers and all that kind of shit, but it's not really, you know, like I say, we're not trying to do any of that, not kind of trying to make a concourse car. So in the future, we'll be making the uh, rubber, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, splash shields that go over the control arms. Those aren't done yet. There's a few things that would stand some tidying up, but uh, not too, too much. Got the original battery tie down back in there because that is an inspection fail if that's not there, so that's good. Uh, the radiator's redone, all the hoses are new, belts new, wires new, plugs new, air filter probably new, I don't remember, it was a while ago. Overall under the hood, not doing too badly. I'm really happy with how well it runs. It was a bit of a chance. Uh, obviously we did not rebuild the engine, it was not in the budget, but the story was on the Dodge that we used to build this that the engine had been rebuilt and it doesn't seem to leak and it seems to make good power and it starts right up so you know terrific uh, some people noticed of course that i do have a four barrel intake and whatnot for the car you know i could but i mean i'm not trying to go fast i'm just not like that's all if i was trying to go fast i wouldn't start with a with a 318 anyway i guess if i was building the engine from scratch i would probably but but even then i mean this is if I want to go fast, I'll build a, a Valiant with a with a 383 in it. I wouldn't start with a huge car uh, like this. So uh, I'm very happy with the old Poly, and man, there's just like it's all nice and dry. And you know, I've been driving it a little bit, but I mean, it's just it's just a treat, and uh, seems to be everything I could have hoped for there. So that's excellent news. Still some cleaning to do and whatever. I mean, we just barely got it finished for this video here so um, you know we can keep improving the car as, as time permits I've got rear armrests to do those will get repairs and put back together the steering wheel is not perfect there's some cracks and stuff but it's the original wheel I'm happy with it these aero wheels are worth way too much for me to think about trying to find a better one and it's not bad enough that I want to spend two grand having it recast. Uh, I would consider trying it myself, but again, not a show car, not too worried about it. You can see that the original rubber on some of these uh, seals that close up the panels here, uh, the original rubber has just completely decomposed. So I've saved the little metal skeletons and we're going to think about how we're going to remold the rubber back onto those things. But that's not a safety issue, so I was happy to just kind of put them together for now and we will think about how we're going to do that and when we start making the final improvements on the on the car here. But overall going pretty well. Really quite happy at, uh, at how quiet the car is. That was really important uh, part of this job for me was to make it feel like, you know, again, a nice quiet original car. I believe I mentioned in the video that uh, one of the uh, bits of motivation to finish the blue car was that I would give myself the uh, opportunity to put this car on the road as well. And it's getting late in the season, but if there's any way of getting this thing plated before it snows, I would like to try it. You guys let me know if you think we should try. It would be really cool to get the 59 and 60 on the road this year. It'd be a fun birthday present, I guess, for myself. It does need the same exhaust treatment as the blue car the original exhaust is still on this car but it is you know it's failing it's not good enough to pass an inspection so i don't really want to just patch up the original single exhaust if we can get a nice system like mike put on it uh, mike's custom exhaust there again uh, i do not do paid endorsements for anything and i never have but i will recommend mike's custom exhaust for free any day they're very kind and they did an excellent job and uh you know nobody has to pay me to recommend those guys they're in sherwood park and uh you know tell them tell them i sent you and i'm sure you'll get zero percent off because that's what i got <laughs> thanks mike uh superb job and i'm gonna be phoning you this week and we're gonna get this baby booked in as well core plugs and exhaust and this car is largely ready to go already i did put tires and brakes and everything together and tuned it up 
when I got the car five years ago, and we did a short video about this about six months ago, uh, about the state of this car, which is a very, very nice machine. So why don't we see what we can do with this? And uh, this will be my little, uh, my reward for finishing that car, is that I get to do a very simple one. And then we'll have a garage full of Furies here, and that'll be all right with me. Cheers, guys. Uh, I don't know what else to say. It's been a very, very, very long week, and I'm exhausted, and I, uh, I just, uh, I really want to give this video up, so that's what we're going to do, and uh, we'll be back to the usual full-length chaos and nonsense next week. It's uh, this week. I really just wanted to make it about the Fury and having that finished and, and taking it for a drive. I mean, it really did feel like a bit of a victory, a bit of a, you know, there was a, there was never a time when I thought it wouldn't get finished, but there was a lot of times when I was thinking about how long it was taking. And uh, soon we will get to, uh, I really want to in the next week or so, uh, try and set it up with Kevin, the gentleman I bought the car from. If we can maybe take the car over to the farm where I got it, and uh, I would really like to see if his mom would like to go for a ride in the car that she remembers her father buying. So that might be a lot of fun, and uh, hope you guys tune in for that, and uh, we'll catch everybody very soon. Cheers. Oh, please uh, do hit the like button if you like this kind of thing, and please hit the subscribe button if you like old Plymouths and that kind of thing, because we have a lot of it uh, in stock here. <laughs> Okay, see everybody very soon. This is a regular ah, Same little shit. You have so much fun on this show, you guys. I'm yeah. so glad you tuned in tonight. You know, when we're dead and gone, this video... Yeah, this is how I want to be remembered. At bands. least we left this piece of art for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like the bad broke up and actually went his own way. Behind the flip was real, eh? <laughs> and fight with Kyle Carter. <laughs> circle, waiting for a train. Well, I didn't really need another car, but it could be worse.